Hello everyone and welcome to another Starbase video. I'm Pip and I'm Elu. And we're here for a new type of video format where we'll be discussing news that have to do with Starbase's development. So for example, new things that have been recently added to the game, as well as upcoming features. And we'll be highlighting some of the community's creations. And of course, we'll also be having conversations about topics that you, the community, wants us to talk about. So let's get started. A lot of things have happened since the EA launch of Starbase, and while there are still plenty of bugs in the game, we have also been patching them out frequently. As well as bug fixes, we have introduced plenty of new features in the game, and here are some of the most important ones. So first of all, moon mining was recently added to the public test universe for larger scale testing, which means that the first moon is now mineable, and you can find ore veins beneath the surface, and these ore veins actually also include new types of ore that weren't previously available anywhere in the early access period. So you can try to find those, or you can test out your mining rigs, as so many of you have already done. For example, here's one of the coolest ones we've seen, posted on the subreddit by BUDI710, as you can see here. The capital ships have also been added to the PTU. You can find the capital ship parts from the crafting menu. We also have a wiki page which shows you how to build a capital ship for yourself, so please do check that out. Please note also that the capital ships are still very much in a testing phase, so do not expect a polished experience, but still, building a capital ship and warping with one should already work on the PTU. Both moon mining and capital ships will be added to the live EA build once we're happy with how they work, but that might still take some time. But at least in the meanwhile, you can still try them out, try possible capital ship builds or test your moon mining rigs in order to prepare, prepare for their addition. Lately, we've also been having a bunch of station destruction events in the PTU to prepare for the addition of the station siege mechanics. In these events, the players can choose whether they want to be in the attacking team or in the defending team trying to defend the attacked station. Here are some clips of these events, as you can see, and if you wish to join one of these events, the best way to get notified by them is to join our Discord server, where we'll post about when these events are happening. In addition to these, there has been countless of smaller and bigger things that have been added to the game since the launch. There are new stations near the moon, safe zone visualizations, as well as company tools to manage company ships. Of course, a lot of bugs have been fixed, and we will continue to fix them as we find them. If you're interested in the details of it all, please do check out our patch notes. There are plenty of upcoming features, but here we'll be highlighting one of them, which is deeds, which haven't been talked about that much yet. So there are different kinds of deeds, and the first one is the spaceship registration deed. It's a craftable and equipable single-use item, and the reason why it exists is so that you can register decommissioned ships that, so, for example, if you, if you see someone's shipwreck, you could build it into a new ship or register, register it just like that if someone has decommissioned their ship. And also, if you build a completely new ship outside of the spaceship designer in the universe, you could register that using, the, using this deed. So the way to use it is you equip the deed and then you point it at the structure that you wish to register and then it will check if the, if the structure is a valid spaceship, so it has to have a valid frame with a, with a thruster attached to it, and also the objects in the structure have to be within the building budget. And if everything's okay, it will let you name the ship. The ship's blueprint will be created based on the structure at the time of its registration, so changes made to the ship afterwards will not be counted, and there's a few other exceptions as well, so you cannot use the ship deed on a ship that is already owned by another player. You also cannot use the registrations deed inside station's area where it's not allowed. So this is to prevent anyone from stealing ships in their stations where they do not want that to happen. But if you wish to steal something, you can use the hack deed, which is also a craftable and equipable single-use item, and it works mostly the same as the spaceship registration deed, but in addition to checking if the, if the ship has a valid frame and if it's within the building budget, it also checks if the ship's owner or any other player that has rights to the ship is present or not. And if not, it will start the stealing process, which takes some time and will cancel if the player moves too far from the ship. If successful, player now owns the ship and can use it, but again with few restrictions. You cannot enter Origins safe zone, you cannot rename the ship, 
you don't have any rights to the ship's blueprint, and the transponder attached to the ship will show the original owner's information. However, you can store the stolen ship in any other station's storage besides the origin stations, and you can repair and update the ship in any way that doesn't manipulate the ship's original blueprint. And you can also sell the ship forward if you wish. And then we have the sell deed, which, no surprise, is used to sell despawned ships to other players. It can be created without any cost from any of the owned ships that is despawned at origin. It goes directly into the player's own inventory. It shows the ship's information, for example, the ship's name, its condition, and the deed's expiration date. It can be sold at auction house or traded to another player, and it will become useless after the expiration date. Then we have the test fly deed. It is used to let others test fly your ships. It can be created, again, without any cost from any ship that you own that has been despawned at an origin station. Anyone with an active test flight deed can spawn the ship, but only inside the test flight mode. Then last but not least, we have the salvage deed, which is used to sell the ownership of a ship somewhere in the universe. So a ship that's not despawned at any station, so for example a shipwreck, it can be created without any cost from a ship you have ownership of. So for example, if you've uh, crashed into an asteroid somewhere and don't have the energy to get back to your ship and try to get it working again, you could sell the salvage deed of this ship forward to someone else who would like to venture out and try to find, find the ship and then salvage it. So this deed can then be sold at the auction house or traded to another player. And here I know that at least some of you might be thinking, yes, all that new stuff is nice and all, but where are station sieges and where are capital ships? and why are we adding new stuff when the core gameplay hasn't been finished and there are still plenty of bugs left to fix in the game. So here we'd like to address some of those concerns too. First of all, we made the mistake with the dates on the roadmap being far too optimistic. This of course created expectations with the players, which we then failed to meet. The reason this happened is that sometimes when we are working on certain features, we discover that in order for that feature to work, we first need to complete something else before we can push that feature into even a PTU. This of course is not an excuse, since we really should have seen that coming and we should have known better, but that is, however, how things tend to work in terms of game development. In order to avoid this kind of mistake from happening again, we have decided that we will no longer use dates in our roadmap. And instead of the dates, we would like the roadmap to focus more on our development priorities. And as for the people who have doubts whether we're focusing on the right things with Starbase's development or not, we understand that it might seem that way because of, for example, the feature videos that we push out where uh, we're discussing a new feature before the previous features have been fully implemented in the game or, the, or because there are still plenty of bugs left in the game that haven't been fixed, but we're still adding new features. Um, however, uh, it's not exactly possible for us to develop Starbase in a way where we have all of our development team focusing on, for example, fixing bugs or everyone just focusing on the core gameplay features because um, that doesn't necessarily speed up the development. It's, it's basically like um, switching a light bulb. It doesn't uh, make it any faster if there are 100 people switching that same light bulb. And we're actually a fairly big studio, so we have plenty of people to be able to uh, focus on um, developing the core gameplay features, as well as um, people working on the new features, and also people working on fixing bugs all at the same time. So we're pretty confident that this is the best way for us to work on Starbase. So we hope that you guys can trust us on that. But we um, try to be as transparent as possible with the uh, game's development. So we do post progress notes every Monday, which are quite detailed in, in what, we're, what we're working on and for how long we've been working on, on a certain feature. With both the progress notes and also the roadmap, you can get quite a good idea of of what we're working on at each time. It's also really important to note that while we post progress notes and these videos, there's still a lot of development stuff that goes behind the scenes that doesn't get really featured as much, but still is actively worked on each and every day. 
Last but not least, we will be highlighting some of the amazing community creations that our players have made and this time we'll be focusing on the games inside a game made with our in-game programming language YOLOL. So first of all, we have Endo Dash made by Violet Roll aka Necromancer and this is a game where you're supposed to jump over obstacles for as long as you can and um, I actually tried this and it's not quite as easy as it sounds like. And next up we have Void Invaders made by Beatbreaker and this is a game where you shoot alien invaders while trying to dodge them. It even has a PvP mode where you can battle against another player. And next we have Space Battles made by Drong, which is a game that I was able to try out at the end of the closed alpha event in um, July, I think it was. And this is a game where uh, you're supposed to find out where the enemy's spaceships are and also try to not let the enemy find out where your spaceships are. So here at the top you can see me trying to locate the enemy ships and the red red ones are the ships that I've been able to hit. And uh, at, at the bottom you can see my where I've placed my ships and the enemy who is trying to hit them first. But I somehow managed to win this one and it's pretty fun. And finally we have the asteroid dodging game made by Freed Script. And it's a game where you obviously dodge asteroids and as the video title says it's basically a starbase within a starbase. Yeah, so if we understand this correctly, you're supposed to collect the the green dots while trying to avoid the blue dots which are the asteroids. It makes us really happy and proud to see the Starbase community come up with all these creative things. So if you yourself have seen or done any other YOLOL creations inside Starbase or anything else, please let us know because we love to see them. They are honestly just so, so cool. And also, if you wish to see more of the community's creations, we do post community news segments on the forums every month. So you can find more of those listed there. If you enjoyed this type of video format, let us know and we'll make more of these, although we'll probably still make more of these even if you didn't like it. But um, anyways, let us know also if you have any topics if you, that you'd like to hear more about. And as a bonus, if you have any creative name suggestions for this type of video series, let us know in the comments. We tried our best to think of something cool, but we couldn't quite figure out. So let us know if you have any suggestions. And also links to everything we mentioned in this video, like the progress and patch notes, as well as community news, can be found in linked in the video description. Until next time! Bye!